Hey guys, this is Hardy from Digital Painting Studio. Today let's continue our five faces in five weeks challenge. This is face number four. We're going to paint this cool warrior girl. But before we dig into this one, I wanted to point out that with three faces done in this series, I am already feeling this noticeable improvement in my own work personally. Every part of it, just the whole process, the quality of the final product, the brush strokes are just starting to flow more easily. And I only mention that to really hammer the idea that practice really works. And it doesn't have to be this exhaustive, tedious process. If you just paint something, with regularity, things just start to get easier and better. You get more confident and excited about your own work, and that's when artists really start to level up. So don't be daunted by that blank canvas. Don't overthink or overplan. Just start. I'm betting you will surprise yourself. And if you're participating in this challenge, I hope you're already feeling that. It's really awesome. I'm trying to cover a good general topic about painting faces in each video in this series. I think we've covered some great useful stuff in the videos so far. So today, I wanted to rewind a little bit and talk about some fundamentals. The main reason for that is I think that great artists are the ones who do the very simple things very, very well. So these core principles are always worth considering. And for today, let's talk about shapes. Now, as I sculpt the forms of this face with value and color, there are definitely quite a few principles at work here. But let's take a step back. When most artists start out drawing faces, and this was certainly the case for how I started, we tend to use lines to define the faces. And I'm sure you've all done this a million times, just a pencil sketch, or a pen sketch of a face. It's one of those ones where we just outline the main shape of the face, the main landmarks, like the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. And that's basically all we need to quickly and effectively communicate a human face. In fact, I still use a line art sketch to start each one of the paintings in these series, pretty much every project that I work on. It's because it's a really efficient way to communicate shapes and forms. That's why we sketch. It's very useful, it's very easy, and it works. But lines can be limiting, and they can actually hold you back in your development as a painter. And here's the reason. Lines are so effective, they can be hard to let go of. And I think this is a place where many artists get stuck a really nice line art drawing of a face and then when the time comes to add color or tone it ends up just being some added quote shading to try and sort of round things out but it's still basically just line art at its core it depends entirely on that line work to communicate form and when we depend on lines in this way we lose sight of something that is actually really important that there are no real lines when we observe faces in real life. Go ahead, check yourself out in the mirror. There are no lines defining the forms of your nose, or your eyes, or your mouth. What is actually there, what you are actually perceiving, is shapes. Shaped areas of light and dark, areas of color, planes and shapes defining the three-dimensional forms of each feature of the face. So even though I started with a line art sketch for this face, and every face that I paint, I try to move away from line and towards shape as quickly as I can in the rendering process. And this is what so many great art teachers and YouTubers call painting like a sculptor. And I would definitely point you to Proko, for some great resources on this. His stuff is awesome. This is where we start conceptualizing the forms that we are painting, not as lines, but as planes, as shapes facing either toward a light source or away. So check this character out. 
I have defined a light source above and to the side. So now what I have to do is mentally break down the face into a series of planes. Areas like her forehead, the bridge of her nose, her cheekbones, her upper lip. Those planes are all facing slightly upward toward the light source, so therefore they have a higher, lighter value. And there are so many other dynamics at work that define every shadow and highlight. It's all part of this insanely powerful illusion of three dimensions that we can create on a flat surface. And this concept, this jump from line to shape as the central fundamental element really changed my work and helped me get past a level where I was stuck for years. And when I'm working with my academy students, this single change almost always gives that student this really dramatic and exciting jump up in their capabilities, which is awesome to see. There's a lot to learn, but this is one of those awesome singular concepts that can really make a fast difference. So I hope that can be a light bulb moment for you. And I'm just about wrapping this one up, so let's check out the finished painting. Shapes, planes, light, and color, all working together to make this look like a believable three-dimensional form. And hey, if we're lucky, she even looks like someone has some personality and tells a cool story. That's it for this week, but for more learning resources for painting beginners or even aspiring professionals, be sure to check out Digital Painting Studio. Paint something cool today. Take care.